sometimes through our lives, we tend to overuse some of our sense organs. Uh, we're in the world a lot, we're on computers a lot, we're interacting with a lot of people, we're driving a lot. So I thought we'll take the first few minutes here to uh, take some breaths, to just calm the sense organs so we can more easily go inside and experience that peace and inner power that we all are. It's just a matter of emerging it. And when we emerge it, we also spread it to the world naturally because our world is the world. So we're gonna start with some breaths. So we're gonna breathe in through the nose for four counts. We're gonna hold it for four counts and then breathe out for four counts, hold it for four counts. And if that's too long of a hold, then uh, just reduce the number of counts. Breathing uh, really helps to relax the body. Uh, it's our connection with life. Is If we don't breathe, we don't live, except for those yogis that are in the mountains and can take one breath every 24 hours or whatever it is. So most of us don't have that practice. So breathing is a way to help us release and relax the parasympathetic nervous system. So when you breathe in, expand your ribs out this way. So we've all heard that we should breathe and let our belly release out, but really you want your ribs to go out to the side and your uh, lower back to also feel the breath uh, when you can take it in, okay? So we're gonna start. And if you have any questions, I guess um, you can put it in the chat or something. And one of the moderators will help get that question to me. So it, it, everything's through the nose. Hold four, breathe out four, hold four. Oh, I hope everyone is more relaxed. So next, uh, we're going to do some eye exercises. So again, we use our eyes for a lot. There are predominant sense organ in the body. So if our senses are uh, picking up different things in the environment, our eyes will always be the dominant organ that decides what we're actually seeing versus what we're not seeing. So we're gonna start, and this is good for uh, the muscles in the eyes too, as well as relaxing. So without moving the head, we're, the head is gonna stay stationary. We're gonna look up and we're look, gonna look down with our eyeballs. Look up and look down. And when you trace, try to see everything that's in between looking up and looking down. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing, but go side to side. So from one, one side to the other side. 
And if your eyes get tired, because it is a muscular exercise, just release and relax for a couple minutes and then go back to it if you would like. Okay, now we're going to go diagonal. So from one upper diagonal to the other lower diagonal. And now to the other diagonal. So this way to that way. Okay, now we're gonna go around in circles. And reverse. Okay, and now pick the furthest point that you can see uh, something to focus on. Focus on that and then to focus on your nose. Even if you have double vision, looking at your nose, get, get as close as you can as looking at the tip of your nose. So distance and short. Okay, now make cups of your hands and the edge of the cup here is gonna cup around the bony structure here. So you're not touching your eyelids. You're just putting the hands over and close your eyes and just relax for a few moments. and then release your hands. So how's everyone doing so far? Everything's okay? Okay, so next we're gonna, it's called, the move is called Beat the Heavenly Drums. So we're gonna press our hands against the ears so you're shutting out all the outside sound. And you're gonna use your fingers to drum the back of the head. And then you're going to release. So close your ears, drum, and then release. And again. And release. And one more time. And release. Okay, very good. So we got our breath, 
We got the eyes and the ears. And we'll save the other ones for later. So the topic tonight that we're focusing on in our world meditation, meditation for the world, is the power of lightness and happiness. So one of the ways that we feel the most powerful is when we're the most introverted inside. It's when we start using all our sense organs, interacting, uh, being out in the world that we sometimes lose our power. And so one of the keys is to regain that power by sitting in meditation and becoming introverted. And so feel that you're being your soul, your point of light that you are, is really tiny. Like bring your energy so far inside that it's so tiny. The soul energy is as small as you can imagine it to be. This concentration of the light is what gives us more power. So the more that we can go inside to this tiny, 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 tiny point of light that we are, the more power we have. And when we maintain this, when we're out in the world, we affect the world because our vibrations are very powerful. And especially when we have this, we call it soul conscious. So we're conscious that we are a being of light. And this light permeates the atmosphere, the vibrations of it, because it's invisible. We don't see it can't measure it. So go deep, deep inside. And keep breathing and releasing and relaxing. And uh, if you if your head gets a little bit heavy or tense, then just back off from trying to make that point of light so tiny. So when we concentrate that point of light and we are more powerful, then we experience the lightness beyond. And if the if this lightness can go beyond this earth plane of energy, can go into uh, the realms of ether and light and existence that are outside of this physical realm, then we can affect more of the world. So uh, with your feet, put your feet flat on the floor if you can. And feel the energy of the earth. The earth has is a very strong magnetic field from the iron ore inside of it. And the two poles and the way it works. And I'm not a scientist, but I know the earth has a lot of magnetism. And our bodies connect with that magnetism. So when we connect with the earth, connect not just with our feet, but connect through the earth and around the earth. So taking this, this powerful energy here, bring it through the body, through the feet, and connect to the earth and connect to all the whole world, all the beings in the world 
through that rooting, that sinking, that tree that all the souls belong to. So as well as with our spiritual center, our third eye, which is the being of light, we connect through our physical body, the magne magnetism of our body through the whole earth. So it's another way of connecting with all the souls. So in uh, Qigong terms or Tai Chi terms, these are called Dantians. So the physical Dantian centers below the navel or in front of the spine. Lower Dantian is called, and this is the upper Dantian, the spiritual center. And we also have our middle Dantian. And this is just one system. There's many, many systems. So this is just one system. So how we connect with people out in the world is with our heart energy, with our love and our kindness and making them feel like they belong. They belong to the world. They belong to our community. They belong to our family. So everything starts with us, first of all. The world is begins with us. And then our family is part of that world. So what kind of relationships do I have with my family? Are they light, free, happy? Is there respect? So this is where we start with our world, is with our family. It's easy to think about spreading light and love and power to the rest of the world, to people we don't know because it's just going out there. But can we do that with our family? So bring all of your family members in your heart space. And actually, if this is comfortable for you, if you can stay relaxed, make a circle with your arms and try not to lift your shoulders, let your shoulders drop and the elbows drop. And hold your family in your embrace. Make them feel like they belong. They belong to you. And then reach that out to your neighbors. And then to your community. So everyone is in the embrace.
And then you can lower your arms. <laughs> So when we connect our mind, our intellect, our soul, we connect it to a higher power source called the Supreme Soul. So we as human beings are limited in some ways. First of all, by the physical body. Second of all, by any kind of relationship that doesn't go well, any kind of anything that happens to us, which is part of our story, part of what goes on. So we can't rely on other people for our power source because people fluctuate. And they don't have the power. Maybe they're looking for power too. So the one that is unchangeable and always powerful is the one we want to connect to. And that uh, so many names for that power source. God is a good one. <laughs> many, many names. But it's a being, so we go beyond the name because the name sometimes we have schooling or church or something where we picked up some negative opinions about that power source. So let's just call it a being, the most powerful being, if you have any issue with God. So when we connect with this most powerful being, we take a high jump, no two ways about it. We just go up and we fly. And things that seemed to concern us so much or things that we're worrying about or we're dwelling on the past, oh, that shouldn't have happened. And oh, the future, what's gonna happen here? Or even the present, like, <laughs> I'm here and what do I do? So all of that becomes very tiny. So as our soul becomes tinier and we connect with the supreme power source, all of the things that seem so big become very tiny. So it puts life in per perspective. So when we sit and we connect with this power source and be that power source, the result of it and cultivate it, then we can spread it out and affect, affect everything in our field. We don't have to do anything special, just spread. And the globe, if you saw the globe of the world when we first started, all the places that had the most lights are probably the darkest places. They have the most shadow of ignorance and conflict and strife. So those are the places we can concentrate putting that power source and when we connect with the, the supreme power, power source, supreme power source, we can enlist the help to also give more energy than we could by ourselves. So it's a matter of connecting and taking the help, letting the light in. How much do we let the light in? The more we let in, the more it can spread out. The more the shadows will disappear. So lightness is the result of being light, knowing that we are light. 
putting life in perspective. So we connect to the beings of the earth through our light, our spiritual center, through our heart, belonging and respecting everyone in the world, no matter who they are, no matter what they're doing. And we connect it with everyone through our feet, through the physical earth, through the magnetism of the earth. So keep letting the light in, keep connecting with the supreme being of light and keep letting that light emit from your being. So let it keep circulating, but don't let it uh, get stuck inside. Let it keep flowing and growing. And bring into your awareness some person or family member, community, uh, part of the world. There's so many different calamities going on all the time now. And there's they actually made a name for it. Perma crisis is what it's called now where there's one crisis after the other. So our light is even more necessary at this time. So don't hold on to it, let it flow and grow and affect, affect the world. So bring someone, country, something into your consciousness and let that light flow. 
Think of it as lava. Lava just flows, doesn't stop. It's going. So let that light flow, 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 flow. Whatever anyone needs, their needs will be fulfilled. So let that lightness bubble up into happiness bubbles. Because lightness automatically brings happiness inside. Doesn't have to be as a result of anything outside. Happiness is inside. Feel the bubbles rise up. And see them floating in the air, going wherever they need to go to bring lightness and happiness. Feel the love just emanate from your being.
So now we're going to do a little tapping on the body. So tap down one arm and up the inside of the arm, down and up. And then come across to the other arm, to the other side. And now tap, this is where your heart and lungs are. So we're tapping, activating heart and lungs. And then under the armpits, a little lymph in here. And the other side. And then underneath the ribs, which is your liver and spleen. And then back, kidneys. And then abdomen, you go in circles. So this is some of the meridians and the organs. And now pat yourself on the back. 